everyone, welcome back to a Q and A. Join with Murray, continuing to go through Romans and really set down on adoption. And I really think adoption uh, is probably one of the more overlooked theological concepts. I mean, justification rightly gets a lot of thought, sanctification, but adoption, as you kind of went through yesterday, almost has an endless possibility of blessings and things yes. that can be discussed. Uh, for those who haven't had a chance to uh, hear the sermon yet, I want to give a quick recap. Uh, Romans 8, 14, well, we, we attempted to go all the way through 25, but we really only got through verse 17. Uh, so we're going to do part one last week, part two this upcoming week. And we talked about the benefits of adoption, uh, and we listed seven of those. And, and the, the core idea is that God adopts as... Uh, his children, those he saves, so that uh, those he saves have all the rights and privileges that the true child, Jesus Christ, of God has. I think for me, it can be a struggle growing up here in Birmingham and, and honestly having uh, a loving father and mother, uh, having a home that is provided for all my needs. I'm like, maybe a lot of the orphans that get adopted, they really get adopted into often a family that really changes their life. Mm -hmm. How can we help us fully understand that we are being adopted, even though our lives here on earth, for many of us, seem comfortable, being adopted in God's family is just an overwhelming benefit and blessing that sometimes we numb ourselves to with our own earthly comforts. Well, that's that's right. I, I think I think it comes from understanding the spiritual poverty into which we were uh, uh, born, and I think without really understanding the depth of our separation from God, and it wasn't like we were an innocent. Um, you know, every analogy is perfect, right? So as I mentioned yesterday. So it, it's not as if um, we're a, an innocent child that is just simply the, the, the victim of uh, poor decisions or, or, or difficult life circumstances. But the Bible says that we were by nature, in Ephesians, children of wrath. We were enemies of God. And uh, God, by his mercy, gave his only son to take our place so that we could become adopted children of his. Now, when we, when we see the depth of our depravity compared with the height of his mercy and riches uh, in Christ, then that begins to um, open our eyes to see, oh, wow, well, um, we've got an awful lot to be thankful for. And it's not just, thank you, Lord, for, you know, giving me this, that, and whatever. It's, it's for the rescue that happened. Yeah. Uh, earlier when we were talking, it, you know, we pick, uh, for better or worse, mm -hmm. our parents' attributes, our, their characteristics. Um, and it got me thinking yesterday about how uh, being adopted plays into our sanctification because now as God is our spiritual father, we pick up on his nature and his character. Yeah. Well, why don't you speak into how being adopted, being in that family, we do begin to pick up more and more of our spiritual father God's nature and character and how that helps us grow in our sanctification. Yeah. So first to define terms real quickly, if we think about adoption as an act of God's grace, we think about sanctification as a work of God's grace uh, who by the Holy Spirit makes us more and more into the image of, of him. So as God acts and adopts us, claiming us as his own, he then gives us his Holy Spirit to enable us more and more to die to our old selves and live to Christ. And so they're inextricably linked, right? One certainly precedes the other. Adoption uh, in God's economy precedes the work of sanctification. And the work of sanctification uh, is an ongoing process until uh, the Lord comes again. But because we're children of God, our natural affections are then turned toward him. And so um, the process of sanctification is enabling us to live more and more in light of what those natural affections really are. Yeah, that's, it's a beautiful uh, picture to think about. We're being raised up by just a perfectly heavenly father. Yeah.
Uh, final question. Um, oftentimes, discipline, right, which comes from a loving father, and, and we as parents want to discipline our children out of love. Uh, oftentimes, it isn't in love. It's in maybe anger. Um, and that can sometimes cloud our understanding of the Lord disciplining us and punishing us rather than wanting to redeem or restore us. Could you speak into a little bit more about how adoption um, has the blessing of being disciplined by the Lord? Uh, well, the way that Romans starts out is that it says, uh, uh, as a result of their sin, God gave them over. And so the worst thing that can happen to us is for God to give us what our sin deserves, what we're seeking after. But adoption is the opposite of that. Adoption is saying, no, I am I am bearing the penalty from your sin, for your sin. And so in light of the security of who you are in me through adoption, I'm going to um, use every moment of your life to shape and, and circumstance, to shape and mold you more and more like me without fear of rejection, without fear of you losing your identity, um, but instead, in light of who you are in me, adopted as a child uh, uh, in me, um, you can grow to be more um, more like me. Sometimes that's through pain and, and difficulty. Yeah. Helps to always know that um, every circumstance in our lives and where in Christ is useful. Amen. And it's not wasted. So, well, as always, thank you uh, for your faithfulness to the text and uh, honestly, I think now we could take those sermon points for adoption and, and make this into a seven-week uh, right. yeah. series uh, that I might use in the future. But uh, as always, we would love to hear from you. If you have any questions about a sermon on Sunday or just a topic in general to be discussed, we would love to discuss it here. And as always, thank you for supporting Cobble Park Church.